like a river flowing of refrigerant. This is not the friendliest of sight glasses. Oh, there you go. See it? It's like a river flowing of refrigerant. So today we're going to go through how do we know if that's actually low on gas, right? So let's find out. So whenever you think you have low gas, you always want to check your receiver level. So we're going to come down here. You see, that's below zero. There's nothing in there. That's empty. Okay, you always always want to check your receiver level because if you got like a 30 percent receiver but your sight glass is flashing that means you got a liquid restriction issue or your receiver gauge is screwed up but in this case we got flashing refrigerant some high temperatures it breaks down as it warms up so as of right now i would say that we have low refrigerant so this one's much better to see we can see so that sight glass is flashing that means that there's not you see how there's half liquid half gas there's not a full column of refrigerant going to our txvs that's going to make our txvs not efficient it's not going to work properly okay so this is what you'd call a remote header zoom out so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to go back to the rack i'm going to valve off this entire remote header from the rack and what that's going to do is that's going to suck refrigerant back to the rack and fill it up and we're gonna see if the sight glass at the rack gets any better or clears, or if there's any you know, amount on the receiver that changes, okay? And that's important because, so sometimes these sight glasses can actually mean not that um, the rack is low on gas, but that there's a feeding issue to it. But the fact that we check the receiver and the receiver's flat, okay? Now, if we valve off this header and we see that it gets a little bit better, and then let's say we put it in split, and then we see that it clears completely, well, that tells me that it's a liquid issue. There's not enough refrigerant in the system. It's not a feeding problem, because what would happen is if it was a feeding problem when, when we would valve this off or we would put it in split, we would see the receiver go up to like 40%, but then we would see that the sight glass would still flash, which would kind of tell me, okay, now it's time to take your pressure across your filter dryer. And the reason I'm not doing it right now is because there could be such low refrigerant in the system that I'm going to get this dramatic PSI drop across your filter dryer, even though it doesn't actually have it, just because there's low refrigerant. So we're going to go valve that off and see what happens. So we saw that that gas was flashing. So what I did was I looked to see where my case was. So if I go over here to my refrigeration map, you can see that I got a remote header A1. Down here, I got a remote header A2, somewhere over here, right there. So I found that my case is on remote header A2. So I went over here, remote header A2, sorry, my case is on A1, A2. A, my case is on A1, this is A2. So I valved off just the liquid to A2. So all this liquid in this line would come back through here, back to my rack, hopefully fill up the receiver, and hopefully clear that sight glass. As you can see, kind of hard to see, so you can somewhat see that sight glass is still flashing. So I'm gonna put it in split to see if that works. So just turning off that liquid header didn't do it, so I manually put it in split. So you see, after it's in split, and after your, uh, after I valved off that remote header over here, we now have a clear sight glass. So this definitely has um, a low refrigerant issue. So you can see, after putting it in split and closing off that liquid header, we finally have refrigerant in the receiver. Now, typically speaking, when the gas is low enough on gas, right, you're gonna see trends. So like all of this will be like zero degrees or everything's gonna be slightly off. But because the season that we're at, we're at such a pleasant season right now outside, this isn't really trending. Like this will probably work for another couple of weeks if the leak isn't even repaired without much issue. But the issues that we're seeing is we're actually getting these, these alarms out of defrost, okay? So even though it's all working, right? See this high temperature, 29. But we're actually getting these alarms out of the bakery. We're getting these alarms out of defrost because it can't get enough refrigerant to it quick enough. It has enough refrigerant for it to work, but not 
quite enough for it to do that. But you know, this is just kind of the icing on the cake. Typically it's much more obvious than this. Like it's like everything's trending warm. Like it's very, very apparent. But we have enough evidence between the receiver and between the flashing sight glass and between the alarms and the fact that there are just some cases that just aren't really pulling temp quite right. And there's enough of them for me to say, okay, we're gonna dump some gas into this thing and see how that goes. So how much gas do you add? Well, a lot of times they'll actually have it right on here. This case, it doesn't. So I'm just gonna have to estimate the best I can, you know, based on what I've been a part of. But if you just look at it, it's huge. So and they have huge receivers up on the roof. So, you know, just use your best judgment by what you've been working with. I'm gonna pick up 300 pounds for this guy based off of how much that that's leaking because I closed one half of the split and one half of the split here, this is a huge condenser, probably 100 to 200 pounds of refrigerant. Then I also closed this liquid header, which is probably easily another 100 pounds of refrigerant. So I'm gonna bring 300 pounds by 300 pounds, and if there needs to be any more, like, or it's too much, I'm just gonna sell it to the store and leave it in the machine room for in case of emergency. Alrighty, so I picked up 300 pounds of refrigerant, 100 pounds are over there, got it right here, kind of loaded it into the rack. Now, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, this is how how to do it. You find your lowest suction group, 20 PSI suction group, you plug in your 3 8 holes onto your service valve, you know, you loosen up that service valve, you plug in those 1, 2, 3, flip them over, open it up, put it in. Now, when you put it in, you know, you don't want to put too much liquid into these things. You don't want them to drink too much of it. So it's going to, you know, you're going to drink a little bit. Give it a little bit of time off. Make sure that all those things are down to the same pressure as that. And that the rack has time to bring the pressure down. So you know that all the refrigerant is boiled out of there before you hook up your next bottle. So while that refrigerant's loaded in, you want to make sure you want to check that sight glass make sure, you know, that it's not, that, you know, how's it going. As you can see, it's getting better. It's looking like a ripple rather than a raging torrent, which is good. And you also want to double check on the roof. Make sure the receiver hasn't just skyrocketed to like 50%. So we're just double checking, nothing, no movement yet. So we're gonna keep going with it. Now, the rule of thumb that I've heard is summertime, 20%, Winter time, 80%. Okay, that's like the, the rule of thumb, quote unquote, or whatever. Okay, you don't you don't live and die by that, okay? It depends on your customer and what your company wants. Our customer wants us to run lean because if there's a blowout, these racks are older, they have lots of leaks, lots of blowouts, more often than we would like. So we run it lean so they don't lose, you know, 80% extra gas when they could only lost a little bit. So I'm gonna charge it to around 5%. It's actually a time of year where they're using the full condenser. So it's kind of like a summertime. I'm gonna charge it to five, 10%, you know, maybe just a little bit over zero, depending on how much refrigerant I have. That's just what I'm gonna do and everything should run fine. But you want enough in there to, to be able to compensate for the demand. If everything was on at the same exact time on a 90 degree day, you wouldn't be lacking refrigerant. So that's the goal. So five to 10% is kind of what I'm shooting for. So I'm gonna add 75 more pounds. I thought about adding 50, but I think 75 will be fine. Okay, so really quick, let's look at this. Sight glass clear. So let's go up to the roof and check the receiver now. All right, so as you can see, we got that 5% receiver level. So I think that's good. Um, uh, you know, five to 10% is what we wanted. You can see it kind of wiggle. Now you might want to hang out for like 10, 20 minutes, check it a couple times, check the sight glass because as the refrigeration flows and changes loads, you're gonna see an increase. This might go up to 40% and then it might go back down to maybe even zero. And you gotta kinda like, you know, do your best judgment and be like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna, uh, it's about 10%, you know, or whatever. Because, you know, the load's different. But tonight, it's a cool night. You know, like 60 PSI, I mean, it's like PSI. It's like 60 degrees out tonight. Nice cool night, medium load. 5%, that's not bad. Okay, that's about what our customer wants. Um, 
about what they're looking for. So I think that's it. That's how you do it. Now, one thing I want to mention, and I'm running out of phone battery, so can't really get on video. So we're going to end it here. But find your leak. Okay, I know where the leak is. It's in the service deli. I'm going to go repair it right now. But don't be that tech. Don't juice and go. Find your leak. Anyway, like, subscribe, hit the button, do all that stuff, whatever you got to do. That's how you do it.